Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 5th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier came across an interesting phishing kit on Friday. It emulates the American Express login page. Pretty well done, and he's going over some of the parts here. Now, we have gone over phishing kits before. Nothing sort of extraordinary here. Just a reminder that if your site is impersonated by a phishing kit, just like in this case, often the hacker will direct the user to the legitimate website in the end. Same thing happens here. Uh, one little mistake they make here, and not sure if this is a little bit intentional on American Express's side, but the final redirect to the Amex uh, website goes to a page where you get an access denied. Another common feature that you probably have heard about if you have read a prior phishing kit write-ups from us, but this phishing kit also includes a block list of IP addresses that are often associated with researchers, security companies, and the like in order to block them from accessing the phishing kit. But as you can tell, well, just like block lists for the good guys, isn't all that effective, Xavier still had no problems accessing it. And Guy took a look at his honeypot and found, well, aside from the usual attacks against home routers, particularly Netgear, also some attacks against uh, different types of routers, like in particular Huawei home gateways. And uh, one particular sample that he recovered here was actually not yet known to VirusTotal, which is somewhat unusual given how widely uh, these attacks usually spread and Guy identified it as part of the hoax calls botnet. And as this is the first podcast that I'm recording uh, this week, it's the first time this week that I'll tell you not to expose any HTTP admin interfaces for devices like routers to the internet. That's probably the best and safest way uh, to avoid any problems from botnets like this. Really hard uh, to often keep them up to date uh, with uh, firmware, with a patched firmware. And well, uh, sadly, of course, with many of these routers, there is no patch available. And talking about difficulties updating software, Microsoft's SQL Server 2019 has had its shares of problems with its recent cumulative updates, in particular cumulative update 7, which was released late in September, has had a number of issues with reliability. Well, uh, for SQL Server admins, there is now cumulative update 8. Eight, which was released late last week. So something you can try and hopefully it'll fix some of the problems that Cumulative Update 7 introduced and not create too many additional new problems. These cumulative updates typically focus more on the functional issues and, and features, but of course, uh, without staying up to date on cumulative updates for your database, it may be more difficult to then apply the security updates. And then we have yet another good reminder that internet routing doesn't always work the way it's expected to. The latest victim here is Proton Mail. Proton Mail, an anonymous email provider, has had its traffic rerouted by Telstra. Now, Telstra, an Australian ISP, states that they rerouted accidentally about 500 IPv4 prefixes. You never really should rely on your IP data taking a particular path after it leaves your network. That's why we have technologies like TLS and VPNs to protect our data in transit. And of course, uh, given that Telstra did reroute about four or 500 different uh, prefixes, well, apparently ProtonMail was the only customer to really notice enough uh, to alert its customers about it. 
And security researcher Florian Rode did publish and open source an interesting tool that, well, he calls Rexine. Rexine is a simple ransomware vaccine, as it states here. And Rexine is going after ransomware that is deleting your shadow volume copies. That's essentially the most uh, simple backup that you have in Windows and pretty much all ransomware will erase it because, well, uh, that's how you would get your files back. And Raxine does register itself as a debugger for the tool VSS Admin, which is used to delete uh, these uh, shadow volumes. And well, with that, it can then monitor and alert the user if a process all of a sudden starts uh, to delete your shadow volumes. Looks like a real neat trick. Like I said, it's open source and uh, relatively easy to install. Uh, not sure how much of existing anti-malware already does things like that. I know there have been attempts to, for example, also tie in with encryption libraries and such to alert the user if all of a sudden a particular piece of software starts encrypting files. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again. Tomorrow, bye.